So good evening. You are listening to a live episode of Flaming Freedom. This is the May 13th episode. If you are listening to the downloaded podcast, you can listen live next week at 10 p.m. Eastern, although that time might change. We're going to talk about that. So I'll, I'll let people know if the time changes. It's possible we'll be switching to a weekend morning show or you could like po- we started as. You can post on Facebook what your favorite time is and you can let us know. Oh, uh, we'll that's take, uh, you can. We will, we will read it. You can do that, <laughs> <laughs> and then it will it will almost not matter at all because it will depend on what our schedules allow. But we we do want a time when more people can listen because I would like for the show to become live again, or it is live. But I would like for more <laughs> live listeners and viewers because so we do have a webcam now. And and let me go ahead. I was not actually locally recording until just now. That's enough. So many things to keep up with here. It's too much. It's too much. All right. So, um, yeah, we might end up being a weekend show again before long, and hopefully we'll have more live listeners and viewers. And if we start, if there's evidence of people, more people watching or listening live, we may go back to being a call-in show again. Like right now, we're not a call-in show. Mm. There we go. So this is your host, Dale. And Lauren. And Carlos. And make sure Carlos is uh, the owner of Truth Over Comfort. Yeah, found at truthovercomfort.net. And if you forget that URL, you can just click on his name on our show page yeah, for today. Yeah, that's pretty snazzy. Yep, and that'll take you right to his website where you can see all kinds of videos of his podcast. And they're really good. I just watched one today. It was, it was great. It, you were talking about respecting beliefs and why we shouldn't do it. Yeah. So it was an interesting interview uh, with uh, MK Lords of Bitcoin, not bombs. And the topic was why respecting other people's beliefs. Am I allowed to curse on this show? Are we Absolutely. Oh. It's encouraged. Okay. okay. Why respecting other people's beliefs is bullshit in the sense that to the, generally, whenever someone says you should respect other people's beliefs, what you're stating is that the other person is not emotionally capable of being able to handle any of their dogma being challenged which is antithetical to progress as far as knowledge is concerned, right? So if no one ever challenged my beliefs regarding Santa, the Easter Bunny, Jesus, which are all the same thing, and if if no one ever did any of those things, then I would still be living in this false reality. Well, not a false reality, or at least the reality that I was sp- supposedly uh, embracing was not actually true. So if we are constantly... Uh, tippy-toeing and sticking our tails between our legs every single time um, we are told to respect others' beliefs, we'll never uh, end up being able to progress as a human species. Yeah, exactly. And and that's the thing is what what people will often do is say, why can't we just get along, for instance? Or that why are you attacking my beliefs? And, and you're looking at me while you say that. That's just because you're right there. Oh, okay. it's, I, I can try to because I say crime. that a lot. Why can't we uh, just get along? Why can't we just get along? I, I, I wasn't actually talking about you, but, okay. but yeah, that's it's. I just think it's cute when you do it because, like I said, you just inspire me to be more mean because you're being so nice. Well, it's that dichotomous mm-hmm. nature of podcasts, right? Mm-hmm. And and the the funny thing about the the why can't we just get along is well, I agree we shouldn't be using violence or theft in any single word discussions, but we should also be able to manage actual conversations where we're discussing large ideas instead of, say, who won last night's game. Yeah, well, when someone says, why can't we just get along, or why, the, the, the big one is, why are you attacking my beliefs? And, and it's ridiculous to re- refer to a discussion about topics as an attack. Yeah. And, 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 that's, and usually that means as someone, when you're talking about a religious person, they've been... The, the whole nature of religions is evangelism. As you said on your show earlier today, Carlos, when you were Catholic, you thought people were going to burn in hell if they didn't share your beliefs. And so it was the moral thing for you to evangelize. It was yeah. completely reasonable for you to do that based on those belief, if those beliefs, if they were true. And so if, if and then if, if you have religious people getting up on their soapboxes to evangelize and then they, they call it an attack, if you just counter, if you just get up on your soapbox to say what you believe, all of a sudden you're attacking them. No, we're both using our free speech and having a discussion. Yeah, here's the thing is that the quickest way to be able to figure out whether or not an idea is valid or invalid is whenever the person decides to be loud about it. Right. So it's important for the Westboro Baptist Church to go out there and say, all fags go to hell. 
because people are able to say, hey, let me go ahead and look at what, what they're stating right here. Look, this is an absolutely insane idea. I should let other people know this is also an insane idea. But if they decided to keep it to themselves, keep it to themselves, but also proselytize to their children, scaring the hell out of them, well, then that wouldn't be as open. And the only way we're going to be able to really be able to figure out if, if different principles are logical or illogical is if people are willing to talk about it. Yeah, let's get all the ideas out there in the light of day, and they will get vetted for their merit. Yeah. And and it, that's what drives me nuts when everyone talks about, why are these atheists so loud? I'm like, are you kidding me? For years, I grew up where every Sunday morning there was nothing on television except for preachers preaching their beliefs, for on, on, again, up on a soapbox, out to millions of people on the airwaves. That's, they've had the podium for hundreds, thousands of years. And finally, some people are coming up and going, hey, wait a minute, I believe something different. Oh, my God, why won't you shut the fuck up, you fucking atheist? And that, yeah. that's, the, that's the thought. And I'm just using atheists as one example. You might be agnostic. You might be Wiccan. You might be uh, something other than the mainstream point of view. And yet, there's still people who have the balls to say that Christians are so persecuted. There's yeah. such a persecuted class now because— Look at the secular humanism just taking over and enforcing itself on everyone. No, no, you've been able to force yourself on everyone forever, and you are lamenting your loss of privilege. Yeah, no, that's and, what it's coming and to. Yeah, the, the idea of 80, what is it like, 80% of the nation being persecuted by a few nerds on Facebook known as atheists right. is absolutely <laughs> fucking insane. And that leads very well into one of our first discussions tonight that we got, we're going to get to right after we talk about our Urban Dictionary Word of the Week. The uh, Christian Derp of the Week is uh, about the 11 things atheists can't do. And this, I want, you know, I want all the Christians out there, uh, especially Christians in this country, this first world country where Christianity is the overwhelmingly predominant religion, which is a weird thing to say because there are a bunch of different Christian religions, but the basic foundation there. And I want them to uh, just, you just have to keep telling yourself, you're going to know Christians are an oppressed class. Christians are an oppressed class. And we'll talk about atheists and what that means. So uh, tell us about gender fuck, Lauren. Oh, you're, you're, you want me to swear. Here I go. <laughs> No, you put um, it there. You made the word this I know, week. I, I know. Well, I can't take you know, credit I, for it. I actually thought about this when, uh, was it, I think it was on this show where you talked about how Facebook had like 50 different gender uh, identities or something uh, uh, to that effect. Yes. Um, and this was one that wasn't on there. Um, but that's because some people think that it's... <laughs> they didn't put gender fuck as on that drop down I, menu yeah. on the choice of gender. I don't know why. That's weird. Yeah, it's really weird. Facebook, get on that. Yeah. Jesus. If you're listening. Um, Watch your language, Carlos. Sorry. <laughs> What's wrong with Jesus? Oh, wait. Everything. I, I, okay. Anyway, go ahead. You're I'm not going to gonna go there. Um, so, gender... Gender fucking... <laughs> no, it's I gender even, fuck. You're not supposed to add no, 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 no. It, there. It, well, it's, it's several things. It, it can be... A, this is a... Fa this is a, oh, a, a verb? This is a very complicated okay. word. Yeah, it's, it has a lot of different meanings. It can be used meanings. as a verb, a I noun, apologize. an adjective... I mean, it's it's a very versatile uh, device uh, in the language of of uh, people who don't appreciate gender, or maybe do appreciate gender, or maybe they don't even believe that gender exists. And I know that all of what I just said is totally confusing because who cares? Well, fuck gender. Well, for a lot of so, people, if you're a regular listener of this show, then you're probably following along better than most. Oh yeah, that's true. You guys are pretty cool. We try to keep people adjudicated. And the definition is? <laughs> Go ahead. Um, it's uh, deliberately sending mixed messages about one's sex, uh, usually through dress. So you might like go into work and have a tie on, and you'd be like doing the newscast, and then you stand up, and suddenly you have like a skirt. That That's gender fucking... I have such trouble saying it. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, it's just a word. You've been brainwashed. Just, but just I, release yourself, free no, it, your it's mind. It's because there's a microphone in front of me. So? And, and, and I like to behave. What is not behaving about saying a word? Well, 
there are other I mean, I have a history in in which I have been on other radio programs that were on broadcast radio. They wouldn't fucking let you say oh, fuck. Oh, they wouldn't okay. fucking let what me say fuck. What a bunch of fucking okay, fuckers. Okay, so you've been conditioned And so, for like, that. It's, yeah. it's just my, like, my, hey, I did my too. brain just, it's weird. I did oh, too. Right. Remember, you, I was on, on Free Talk Live yeah, for years, so. and that is broadcast on stations where they do have to bleep out any mm-hmm. swear words, and if you had accidentally said a swear word while you were a co-host, you were banned from the rest of the show. Mm-hmm. They, they, it was just something they had to do just to, so they didn't get in trouble with the... FCC, stations. right? Yeah. They try to bleep you, and if they, they don't always, it's you know, hard to catch. But if, even if they bleep you, they, you have to get off. So, <laughs> gender fucking. I guess it doesn't look good for the, for the host to get bleeped. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Um, so, anyway, it, it just has to do with when you're trying to make a point about how ridiculous some of the gender norms are. Because there is there shouldn't be a norm. Like, people should be able to do whatever they want and be free to do that. And a lot of times gender fucking is theatrical. It's, it's somebody holding a sign. It's it's some, it's like you're making a statement. Yes. You're, 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 you are challenging the status quo. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and that's what I appreciate about it. It's, it's, it's about expression, um, of how free you are to, to do what you want. And also to tell people like that they, should probably rethink their their values in terms of. So th- the, that's a really being, positive approach to it. Very much. Well, There's I'm a, a positive person. I understand the positive thing, but this also sounds like the person can be a complete attention whore. <laughs> well, it might be that. It might. It depends on whether is is it self centered or are you honestly trying to affect culture, right? Because we we do things to sort of fuck status culture, right? Status fuck mm. as libertarians. Mm-hmm. Just to, we just do things like not standing for the judge when everyone else is standing, isn't that like gender fuck? But for statism, um, yeah, and then that's is, a good example. It depends on are you doing Ooh. that to get personal attention? I, and I would posit that some people are. Mm-hmm. Some people are sort of activist celebrities, right? Yep. And then you have people, for instance, like I'm. I'm just gonna say it. I'm probably send your hate mail to Dale at flamingfreedom.com, but I'm just gonna say it. A lot of drag queens are attention whores. Right. It's okay. It's okay if, you know, if it gets you, maybe it gets you attention and it's cool, but uh, but that's why they're kind of exhausting for me. Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily a bad thing if you're an attention whore, but attention whores in general, whether they're drag queens or not or anything else, and and some people are just attention whores. You know, I call them attention vortexes. You can tell they're very high maintenance. They need you to be talking to them, talking about them, uh, interacting with them on a constant basis in a large group. Like if there's a large group of people and there were one or two people who are like. Pay attention to me. Talk to me. Mm-hmm. Um, you're talking to someone else right now. I'm going to come up right next to you and like try to get your attention. Dale, Those why people, are you talking to Lauren and not me? That, let me try to do Wait. this. Jesus. And uh, I'm special. attention whores, attention whores like Carlos, Jesus. Uh, they <laughs> they can be exhausting. Yeah. Just suck. Yeah. So exhausting. Just suck all your energy into their vortex. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, it's, and you just, it wears you out, especially if you're an introvert like me. Like myself, yeah, I am. I am actually an introvert, and attention whores are exhausting for me. I think that's why I haven't. Like, I really don't have any personal beef with drag drag queens per se. I just, I just, I, I even think they're cool. I like videos of them sometimes and things. They're hilarious, mm-hmm. but I can only take them in small doses because they are. They do tend to be attention vortexes, and I and that dry, just wears me out. I see. Well, they can be so, kind of a vampire, right? Yeah, like they're sucking the energy out of other people. <laughs> so, like some people, say, some people send your, send your hate mail. Some to people Carlos are at, no. are a faucet, and other people are a sink. You know, so some people are like bringing in as much energy as they can, and then there's the sink that's just kind of sucking out every single thing. And you see that, you see that with 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 people all the time. That I mean, you can be in a room and someone walks in, and they'll just. You just know that they're going to make the place a fucking disaster because they want all the energy and attention on them. They are a vampire. And they're the worst hmm. kind of people that you just definitely do not want to be spending much of your time with. I hear you, and I know what you're talking about. I think that can be a little bit of a false dichotomy. There's certainly like the notion of someone who's kind of a performer. There's like someone who's a performer who will come to a party, for instance, and liven up the party. And you can stand there yeah. and enjoy what they're doing Without ex- any exertion of any output of energy on your part. And that ne- isn't necessarily an attention uh, vortex. But then there's someone who wants you specifically 
who pay attention to them. They want they want to go talk to everyone, or if there's someone who isn't like absorbed with what they're doing, they're going to do what they have to do to get that person's attention. So could and could, could he make a same. separation kind of by but like I think I think another separation though is just introverts and extroverts. Well, and an I, introvert is just less uh just has less energy for for nonsense like that. <laughs> well, well, maybe. If we're going to be split, splitting up, you know, extroverted people and attention horse, I think the best way to do it is, is the attention being given to them valid? Is it because people want to feel that attention towards them, like they're bringing something into the conversation? Or is it because people are feeling bad because you can tell the fact that that person is angry that attention is not being given to them? So mm -hmm. it's whether it's valid or invalid. Right. Like they sincerely earned your attention. Yeah. Or you were listening to someone else and they walked up and tried to start talking to you and get you focused on them instead. I can't I can't count I can't count how many times I've been in that uncomfortable situation where I have someone who there I'll be at a table, for instance, and someone is speaking and I'm absorbed in their converse what they're saying. And it's clear that I, I my attention is focused on that person. Everyone's at the table's attention is focused on that person. Mm -hmm. And someone just offhandedly will look will start talking to me. About something that I am not interested in. Will it be about Ron Instead Paul? of the thing that I am interested in, <laughs> maybe. In libertarian circles, I find, I find that a lot. Be. People are just like, oh, look. Yeah. Oh. It's like, yes, happening. I've, I've heard of that. Yes. Thank you. Have That's you heard about the Fed? Not related. Do you guys know about the Fed? The Fed? The Fed. The Fed? Oh. oh, my Lord. The Iron Bank, you mean? <laughs> the Iron Bank. I haven't heard that. Uh, yeah. Have yeah. you guys heard about I think we're vaccination <laughs> chemtrails? Okay. No. Oh, God. We, we need to stop. All this. that stuff is happening on the free chalk or the free state project forum. It's there's happening. A, there's a chemtrails thread. There's 9 11 truth something. There's uh, there's the thread I started where we started talking about religion and how New Hampshire is the second least religious state. So check that out. All right. So um, 11 things that atheists can't do. We should get to this since we set people up for it and got them all excited. Mm. We should tell them what's going on. So uh, the number one thing on here is live, because in 13 countries, atheists still face execution. If, now, that's if they openly express their beliefs or re reject the official state religion, which in all of these cases is Islam. So hmm. just make sure you respect other people's beliefs while you're there <laughs> and not talk about it so you're fine. Right. Just don't, just don't, uh, just don't exhibit freedom of speech. Yeah. You're allowed to be an atheist secretly, privately, in your own head. Just don't dare... Uh, spread your poison to other people with your free speech. And, uh, yeah, so there are a number of other outra outrageously harsh restrictions on the basic rights of non-believers around the world, from revoking citizenship to, of course, denying marriage. Uh, I shouldn't say, of course. I, a lot of people may not realize that. And in a more severe oppression of atheists around the world, the 2013 edition of the Freedom of Thought Report published by the International Humanist and Ethical Union has those stats. Uh, the number two thing they list, and I know you're going to be very upset about this, Carlos and Lauren, mm. is that uh, running for office. Bummer. It's it's pretty much you're pretty much blackballed for all practical purposes oh, from no. running for office. I know, I know, you're heartbroken, oh Carlos. God, I'm so sad. I was going to run for Senate next year. Yeah. Well, guess what? How many? Guess how many? Uh, take a stab at how many people in Congress are openly atheist. In the Take, in the take U.S. A Congress? Would you say it's uh, two, three digits, two digits, one digit? Well, because it's, I'm looking at the article right now, it's none. But yeah, it's probably... <laughs> look sorry. at the That's, article. Sorry, guys. Oh, so man. you can put as many digits on zero as you, as you want. I was going right? to do it dramatically and say zero. Goose You could say egg. zero to the 12th power. Goose. Where's the damn cam? Yes. Goose w egg. Math is great. That's how many. Uh, that, right there. That's right. It. There are none. You cannot be openly atheist and run for like a major office in federal government. And uh, I, 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 as far as non-federal, despite constitutional restri restrictions on religious tests for holding public office, six states have laws on the books barring non-believers. They're not technically in effect, but they don't need to be. Not believing in God is such a volatile political issue that a simple meeting with people who have ties to atheist groups can expose a candidate to a brutal smear campaign. Although a lot of things, uh, uh, smear campaigns are commonplace, but the point here is, I think is that it's effective. Like if you get that, that's one of the most effective things you can do. Yeah. Is tell people you're atheist. Uh, just remind yourself, just keep saying it to yourself and, and especially around your fellow Christians. Cause they'll repeat it back to you. 
Christians are an oppressed class in this country. Just keep saying it. Now, all this stuff I tell you, just ignore it and go la, 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 and just say your, the mantra over and over again that Christians are an oppressed class. I have a question yeah. for, you, for you. Since you, you've, bring, you've brought this up a few times, do you think there's anyone who says that Christians are an oppressed class who are not actually Christian? Oh, I doubt that. Okay. <laughs> I don't know of anyone. Do, All right. Do so you? It's, it's not that bad yet. Um, occasionally, Fox hasn't gotten News, there. Oh, I'd say it's getting, if anything, atheist. it's getting less bad. Uh, Go ahead, Connor. Occasionally on Fox News and stuff like that, they'll have some token atheist who talks about how atheists are such assholes and they're trying to oppress Christians, stuff like that. So yeah. occasionally you'll find some token. The self-flagellating atheist. Oh, God, they're the worst. Yeah. I, I'm with you there. The the amazing atheist talked about those. And, just, you know, why do we have to talk about it and, you know, get on to other people about their... And like, there's, there's a lot of reasons to talk about it. How about the fact... How about the things I'm talking about right now? The first two, right off the bat, the fact that they're executing atheists in some countries, the fact that you can't, you're clearly discriminated against in a broad-based way, and for instance, running for office by virtue of being an atheist, it needs to be talked about. Don't get on to atheists for being loud. Again, Christians have been loud forever. That's their calling card. And... And we have a different point of view, and we deserve to talk about it. And uh, but, and I want to include, by the way, agnostics, panentheists. If you have spiritual uh, agnostics and things like that, um, th- t- it's I I feel like there's a, just the, all that's still like a, a far cry from from uh, a lot of that's just sort of having just being kind of saying you don't know. I don't. I kind of don't know, and I think it's kind of ridiculous to make assumptions about. Uh, can, the can nature I, of a god, or the whether there's a, 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 the existence of a god. Go ahead. Can I do a semantic thing real quick? Yeah. All agnostics mm. are atheists. It's. It, no, I, no, think, no. I think. I think they're weak ag, atheists. Yeah. No, no, exactly. Agnostic weak means atheist, yeah. to not know. Right. Gnostic means knowledge. A meaning no. So you have no knowledge. Right. So that's that's a question of epistemology. Atheism is the act of belief. Right. So, right. or the lack of active and, and that's why they so have you terms say, like weak atheists and strong atheists yeah, and so things like if, that. If you say but, I don't know, and, and most agnostics would probably qualify as a weak atheist. Yeah, yeah. It's it's. Yeah. In, I thought the faith though was like believing something that you don't know, right? Yeah. So so yeah. faith. It's almost it's interchangeable to, with. Well, that, with, that's the funny thing is as soon it's as almost you say, interchangeable with irrationality or th- <laughs> <laughs> like the the, the whole yeah. notion of faith. Um, now, but there there is faith that is based upon something. Like, I could have faith. I have faith in Lauren. If Lauren tells me, for instance, that she's going to take care of my cat, mm-hmm. I have faith that she will take care of my cat. But that's because Lauren has earned that, though. It's not completely out of my ass. Well, I have something to base that on. No, th- th- so that's, I, I, that's I, the that's thing, a, That's though. a different use of the word than what some people is. No, no, I have faith in something with no evidence whatsoever. <laughs> well, the thing is, though, is that You know, X equals X, right? So words should actually have some meaning, which is why we need to kind of move faith away from having any merit whatsoever. So instead say, I have reasonable evidence to suggest that this person will do X, Y, and Z. I guess, but that's a common usage of the word. To say I have faith in Lauren doesn't mean I think she's an angel. Well, I respect Um, your beliefs, and I'll let you use the word faith there. Yeah. (laughs) I, I think that we still use the word faith because it's useful. Like, it's still useful to say man or woman. Um. And I think we want to say, like, I have faith in a person because we can have that. And it can be based off of stuff that we're maybe not conscious of. Like, we may, I may not be able to express why I have faith if, if I had a cat. I, I really should, say, I would probably say confidence. It's a better word. Yeah, that's, but that's they, a good the one. words tend to be used interchangeably. Um, I, I, for human and interaction, so, I like to use the word trust. It would be fine if, if sure, and if and if someone said, "Well, I have confidence that God exists," I would say, "Why? What is that based on?" And if ba- they don't have based, shit, it based, them, it's based on the, fe- the feeling in their heart. <laughs> oh, God, because right? bec- yeah, a heart is another one. Yeah, your heart. Because I, I had someone, your... I had someone, I they said. Well, the reason why you'd save a person over a puppy is because you have a soul. And I was like, can you define soul? And they said, it means you have a heart. And I was like, can you define, you define a heart, heart in yeah. this case? Because heart finally, is an organ that pumps blood around your body. It finally That's reduced to does. empathy. It's and I was like, why didn't you just fucking use the word empathy then? 
instead of using some crazy mystical abstraction that has been used to justify it's, insane shit. It's well, politician it's, speak. It's fun. It's poetic. It's it's beautiful. Uh, it's also say, it's like, politician your speak heart. too. When people when guy, when people are saying that, they're avoiding an honest, straightforward conversation right. where you can actually vet the concepts involved yes. for for merit. And, and if you were truly trying to have a honest conversation and really analyze this, then yeah, she should use more technical language. But if you're just if yeah, you're writing I'll, a poem, I'll, I'll occasionally it's... use whenever I'm really trying to be verbose as fuck. I'll use terms like <laughs> they're trying <laughs> that, to. That wasn't for you. I'm just saying that, that that's what they're doing. It's they're spewing bullshit. Verbose that's as all. fuck. Yeah, yeah if I'm it. being verbose as fuck, then I'll use like the public school system is destroying the soul of children, right? So that's me being verbose. But right, I was right, having right. a que- like a conversation regarding logic and this person, and then they start throwing out words like soul, and then they said that quantum physics. D- disproves all logic and i was like oh god damn it no they don't now, that's just now, that's now someone, you're just a crazy asshole that's someone who knows just enough science to to hang themselves no they just know the word yeah they don't even know the fucking <laughs> well, science that's like when i was a kid for instance i understood I, I knew a lot about magnets and for a kid of my age at the time i was pretty smart and i knew for instance you could spin a magnet within a a, a spiral of copper wire and it would generate power but I didn't really fully grasp like the mathematics of it and all the complications involved. And I didn't understand, for instance, that you're a converting energy of momentum into electricity, and 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 it and it creates drag on the magnet, and as the and it slows the magnet down and it stops, and then the electricity stops. You have to keep spinning it, and it creates drag and all that stuff. So I invented this space station idea that was powered by just having a magnet spinning out in outer space. And because there's no air friction, it should just keep spinning forever and keep generating electricity forever. Well, this violates conservation of energy and mass and uh, laws of thermodynamics. It doesn't actually work. But I knew just enough science to, like, be an idiot. Like, and, that, and that's what's, that's all this shit, like, uh, when someone says something like quantum, quantum science uh, invalidates <laughs> logic... <laughs> It's because someone, because somebody, it's it's passed through several mouths and ears before it got to them, and was filtered until nothing smart was left, and then they just got like this basic thing. They just got this little bit of information about something that's very complex, and they don't really understand it, and they've oversimplified it and lost uh, a lot, uh, everything that mattered, and now they're spewing bullshit. Yeah, it's the Deepak Chopra effect, where it's just. The quantum physics disproves all laws. And you're like, well, you just made a statement that was an objective statement based off of words that you already knew people would understand using logic. <laughs> right. So you just shot yourself in the foot you, again. You're trying to use logic to disprove the existence of logic. And I think laws are really limiting as well. That's the problem with that statement, right? What? Qu- quantum physics breaks laws, but like, why, why have laws? Because the laws are based on reality yeah but you can but reality changes as you learn more but let's get no, on with that's, atheists that's true. oh this is good sorry okay atheists can are number three are not trusted by their peers uh good luck being trusted by your peers if you're an atheist it doesn't um doesn't only appear in the political realm though it's clear there a poll taken during a 2012 election season found that only 54 percent of americans would vote for a well-qualified atheist presidential candidate while this was the highest total since Gallup began asking the question in 58, atheism proved the biggest negative influence on a hypothetical candidate's viability. A few respondents saying they would be willing to vote for an atheist in either a gay or a Muslim candidate. That's interesting. Like what about if, a gay, if you're a gay Muslim Christian, atheist you're candidate. better off than a straight atheist. What's that? What about a gay Muslim atheist? I don't atheist think you candidate? can be Forget atheist about that. Muslim. Uh, oh. Yeah, atheist Muslim. Well, okay. So. Uh, even when they're not running for office, a survey taken in 2012 found half of Americans believe atheism was threatening to them. Right? Uh, people mm-hmm. are are likely to distrust atheists as much as rapists. That sounds about right. They're, they're not, raping the ear of Jesus nothing, whenever they say it doesn't exist. <laughs> right. So, And uh, number four is, uh, the, the uh, number four things that atheists can't do is be respected by their leaders or neighbors. Some of these are a little bit redundant. But then they go on to quote more statistics and things that they've found. Here's a quote. Uh, Robert Bentley, uh, Alabama governor, Robert Bentley, a Republican, threw inclusiveness out the window when he made these comments about religion. So anybody here today who has not accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior, I'm telling you, you are not my brother and you're not my sister, and I want to be your brother. 
<laughs> it's hard to imagine any other class of people, especially one so large. We're not just talking non-believers here, but people of all non-Christian faiths being so casually and expressly dismissed by a, by a governor of a state of the United States. So there was a military veteran non-believers group it was repeatedly heckled and berated in 2011 during a Memorial Day parade. They were all supportive of the troops until then. Um, so, although I don't want to get started on supporting the troops because, and, and, and at the same time trying to be anti-war. It's a funny it's kind of Yeah. A weird place Support to Support murderers to be. who use stolen money. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so... Number five, things atheists can't do is have a job. <laughs> uh, it can make it harder to get a job. The study on distrust of atheists cited above also found the issues of faith carry over to hiring decisions. So definitely, uh, if you reveal it, it can hurt you. I still remember going to a job interview where it came up. The, guy, the, the interviewer pointed out, this is a Christian company. And I, I, was, I was kind of... Not really, certainly actively Christian at the time, but I pretended to be. <laughs> mm -hmm. I pretended, oh, that's great. I love that. That's awesome. Hey, I want a job. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I felt like. I, there, there was no, there was certainly doubt created for me. There was certainly pressure on me. And he said, oh, you don't have to be a Christian, but this is a Christian company. And I'm sitting there in my mind thinking, Do you know I don't trust that. <laughs> I don't trust that I don't have to be a, Trish, a Christian. Do you know it would be an interesting article like this? Anarchists. All oh, right, Things that would be can't even be. crazier because you know Let's there's not many that. stats. You know there's not gonna be many stats on that because if I went to a job and it was like I'm an anarchist, yeah. Oh, you're <laughs> yeah. gonna rob our cash register. Yeah. You're just gonna pill for the rat cash register because you don't believe in laws. Yeah, it, right. That's what they're gonna think. You might as well be a rapist. It would be really fun yeah. too if you're in management like some of us. Yeah, and you say you're an anarchist. Yeah. Well, I used to work for the state. Should have told them I was an anarchist. Yeah. Then their heads would explode. So would have mine. But you know, that's why I quit. I feel like these are the I'm gonna I'm gonna go through the I'm gonna blaze through the others a little bit faster. Uh but uh the, so they've already talked about discrimination in jobs. The another one another one is discrimination in custody of your children. Really? Many documented cases of judges denying parents custody rights based on their apparent disinterest in organized religion. Or in other cases of atheist parents being ordered to attend church so their children can undergo systematic spiritual training. I'd like to speak on that real quick. Mm, okay, yeah, please. I used to work in family court and stuff like that. Um, a, a strength that you would show in family court that you can take care of your kids is by bringing up the fact that you bring your child to church every single Sunday and you're a God-fearing person. Yeah. Because, I mean, the judges in this particular case, as you know, they in Texas, for instance, they're elected. Who are they elected by? one of the most Catholic cities in the United States, not only Catholic, but Air Force city. So, um, so the custody thing is totally legitimate. I mean, when it comes to custody of children, it's, it's back ass words everywhere. The best bet you can be is a mom and Christian and have no problem with public schooling or spanking your kids. Best way to get custody. <laughs> wow. Hmm. Yeah. I know for sure being a mom, yeah. uh, most people know that. And, uh, so and a majority of kids who are abused are abused by a female parent. I don't think women are more likely to abuse, but they're clearly not less likely to abuse. And, and the fact that most of them have custody has resulted in a lot of uh, a lot of kids being they're, you know abused by female parent by their mother. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're statistically more likely to be abusive, but. You know, mm, that doesn't even know. matter that much. It's hard to know. Yeah, with, exactly. with such skewed custody statistics, yeah. it's 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 it the ex the obvious answer is is too obvious that there's just more women in control that have custody. So but you can get into a lot of things about absent fathers and what that does. Uh you can follow all kinds of correlations there, but yeah. that's other stuff. So absent fathers versus absent mothers and the difference and all that stuff. So uh, number seven, volunteer in their communities. Apparently it even hurts you if you're trying to volunteer. There have been places that turned away atheists as to, to help in a, in a local soup kitchen in South Carolina. The director of the facility would have rather resigned than work alongside godless members of the community. 
Well, this is how can they be godless if God is omnipresent? Uh, they're God. They're God. They're heathens, and uh, and they're going to give this you is free one labor. Of those things where come on, what, does it is it defying their their what they're preaching to people when they're trying to tell people atheists have no reason to care about anyone, right? They're just there's no punishment for not being good. So why would they? They would just be evil automatically. Like why wouldn't they just be mm-hmm. evil because they're atheist? That's what they seem to believe and that's what they tell people and they tell people the world's going to go to shit if if without religion without people having fearing god so why would they want to work at a soup kitchen in the first place is, is that what is that why she's upset because the fact that they are defying her her claimed facts <laughs> uh, number eight is advertise their beliefs or lack thereof you know don't dare talk about it right just shut up there's a cartoon i posted on this uh on this thread on the Free State Project forum, and it said "old atheist," and it has a guy holding a Bible and saying, pointing at another guy and saying, "Stay quiet." And it says "new atheist." It has the same guy holding the Bible, pointing at the guy and saying, "Stay quiet." And the guy goes, "No." <laughs> hmm. Very, very short and to the point. Uh, and and again, when someone says "respect my beliefs," what they mean is let me get up on my soapbox, preach my beliefs that are that are so valuable and important to me. And shut up. Let me talk, and you shut up. That's yeah. what they mean when they say respect my beliefs. So I just want to say, I don't, I don't expect you to respect my beliefs. I want respect for my right to my beliefs, and I will respect your right to your beliefs. You know, I do not respect your beliefs. That thing about the new atheist, it's funny. So I ran an atheist group for about for as long as I was in college, right? And we were called Atheist Agenda. One of our events, in fact, was people turning their holy scripture in, and we gave them back pornography called smut for smut <laughs> right that was one of our big events and because of that I we ended it. up on a lot of new stuff and things like that one of the things that we did was uh, i was invited to be on this panel and it was a religious discussion panel right and here's why i didn't know it was by the african christian student association so i was up there and it was like me a muslim guy a jewish guy and a christian guy with i don't know if you you've heard about this did you know black people tend to be christians Crazy. <laughs> yeah. So it I've was two hundred black people yelling at me I, for an entire hour about how I needed to shut up about my beliefs and how <laughs> I was being a loud asshole. And one of the one of the people, she grabbed the microphone and she goes, "If you ain't got God, you ain't got love." Right? And she started right. yelling at me, and then she and everybody started wooing. And at the time, I was engaged. I was like, "Well, I'm gonna marry her pretty soon," so I got love. And then the next person goes, well, do you know what? The, okay. Big bang. What does that end with? I was You're like, being theory? Racial right now. Love. Yeah, I, I go theory. <laughs> and she screams out. Yeah. Theory. Everybody starts cheering as if theory means that it's a guess. Right. Right. So I picked up. A Not pen. like they didn't guess. They didn't have just someone write something down in a book and proclaim it to be the case. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I picked up a pen and I walked up to her right in front of her face and dropped the pen and said theory of gravity. And then I walked back to my table and like no one else said anything. But essentially the entire thing was about what how I... I needed to shut the fuck up. Yeah. And it was it was just See, crazy to me. Conversations like that are to me are only beneficial to the extent that other people can witness them, because you can't, if someone didn't arrive at their beliefs through logic and reason and evidence, then arguing on the basis of logic and reason and evidence is not a likely, is not likely going to be a very good tactic, right? To try and teach, reach those people. Those people are basically unreachable for the most part. You, they might, your message might sink in many years later if they have certain experiences in their life and things like that. And that's fine. You might plant a seed that will take root later. But for the most part, those people are unreachable. So conversations like that, like this one, for instance, I'm, I'm sure there are people listening or they're not reachable. That's okay. It's everyone else. I want them to hear the conversation. If I'm having an argument with a Christian, and I know this person isn't receptive to logic, reason, and evidence, because that's not the basis of their beliefs in the first place, then I'm having that conversation for the benefit of onlookers. I'm having that conversation for the benefit of the peanut gallery. So that's why I feel like when when uh, when I've heard people say that that's why we shouldn't bother having conversations with with Christians about what's ridiculous about their beliefs or any other re- religious point of view that's ridiculous and 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 then that's the reason I hear for to not have those conversations and I'm like yes I agree with you and I have no patience for having those conversations in a private setting 
uh, th th those kinds of conversations are exhausting and not don't feel like they're worth the energy mm -hmm. for that reason, right? That's why it's important to know if you're involved in an argument or a debate. So an argument is whenever you're trying to change the other person's mind. A debate is whenever you're trying to change the people's minds around you. Ah, yeah. And it's kind of important to figure out what's going on. So like in one of my events where like a lot of people are showing up, it's not an argument that I'm going to get in with this person. I'm debating because I know there's 50 people around me watching. You're letting them say something and then you respond to what they said for yeah. the benefit of the audience. Yeah. Like, this is what's wrong with what that person just said. Yeah. <laughs> you actually look out at the audience and speak to them. And, and you're right. That, that that's true. Like that, that's the nature of a debate. It's a that's a, a theatrical event. Okay, so uh, we talked about that. They can't talk about their beliefs. And I'll let you go to this article to find more details. We will link to it. It's in the Huffington Post, uh, which you know it's it's got some good articles, but it's also got a lot of BS too. But that's I that's that's most uh, yeah, that's most um, news media. Uh, participate in life without violating their beliefs. This is another, you know, another case of good luck trying to go. Like I, I, I'm, I'm with the the same thing here applies. For instance, for us as anarchists, when everyone else is standing up and saying the Pledge of Allegiance, have you ever just decided not to do that? I used to not do it all the time. Yeah, we are gender fucking the the allegiance, the Pledge yeah. of Allegiance. <laughs> I used to stand backwards, actually. Your status fucking, yeah. <laughs> I got in trouble for it. Wow. A few times. Yeah. Well. Yeah, uh, there was an event at, at Liberty Forum where one of the guests was a, pol a local New Hampshire politician, and he said, oh, I want to bring the flag in and do the Pledge of Allegiance before I do my speech. <laughs> and they said, uh, well, wait a minute, are you sure you want to do that here? <laughs> He's like, yeah, yes, it's very important. Like, did he end All up right. doing it? Did he do it? He did, and it's it was weird the way it happened because... It was almost as if, it, it, this doesn't make sense to me, but it was almost as if all the anarchists were clustered together at the same tables and even in the same cluster, which is astronomically unlikely because it seemed like half the room, like there was almost a line, not a straight line, but like a, a line going through the room mm -hmm. where half the room stood up and did it. And the other half just sat befuddled looking at each other as the Pledge of Allegiance was being said. And I think he also wanted to do like the national anthem, and they were like, "No, <laughs> no, we're gonna do wow. the. They'll let you do the pledge of allegiance," and uh, and just a bunch of people just didn't do it, and we just looked at each other, just dumbfounded. Did, like at the Liberty Forum, we're saying did, the pledge yeah, of allegiance, the wild. like brainwashing can, Nazi can propaganda. I, ask you Dale? I mean, that, like <laughs> now that we're on this topic, okay. Um, when you were in the, uh, was it the Navy? I, I believe. Yes, I was in the Air Force at one point, and I didn't say the pledge of allegiance oh my god and i got away with it like wow. many times oh wow uh, and that's and that's a little shocking because did, when you go into the military i mean you're in you're essentially signing up to defend that flag mm -hmm. uh, on some sure. level at least right i don't right. know it seems like it <laughs> okay number 10 is create an organization the, uh, Ooh, i think a lot of people know there have been, there've been college groups high school groups and things that have attempted to create clubs for atheists and have been denied or yeah. created or or even fought to to get it happen and then thrown in the towel after they've been after they were harassed and threatened and things like that it was eventually it's like eh, it's not worth it um let's see 2011 university of notre dame uh, a group of atheists, agnostic, and questioning students was denied official club status because their beliefs weren't consistent with the university's mission. It is a Catholic institution, but it has a number of other multi-faith organizations. Non-faith is not welcome. Like you can, you could argue. Like I don't know if there's a. I'm curious about that. It says other other multi-faith organizations besides Catholic. So why not atheists? Uh, become a Boy Scout is number 11. Is there anybody Boy that Boy Scouts can... of America still prohibits atheists. Uh, I guess there's another case where gay people are ahead of atheists. Because Boy Scouts eventually caved in and let gay people in. There's still some weirdness as far as like becoming a scout leader at a, when you're older. Uh, there's a certain age. It's like, okay, now you're a pedophile. You have to leave. Yeah, but... You were fine when you were a kid, but now you're a pedophile. You have to go. Do you really want your kids in the Boy Scouts? No. No. No, 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 no. one should yeah. put their kids in. So, no. really... But but it's it's a huge organization that is has a tremendous cultural influence. I mean, think about you get into the minds of the youth, and then that affects the culture for years to come. Yeah, and so I think it's something for people to be concerned about. I don't want to infringe on their rights, and you know, I'm not. I don't want to force them. Like I know a lot of people get upset when trying to pass laws and make the Boy Scouts not discriminate. I don't believe in doing that. I do believe in not. There was a lot. They've gotten a lot of federal funding and things like that. 
federal support in various ways. Things like, oh, you can use this federal building uh, for a, a dollar a year rent, <laughs> you yeah. know, which is the government is giving you a building. Come on. Uh, things like that. And, and I have a problem with that when they're discriminating. But as far as being a private organization, they can discriminate. But what, what are your thoughts, Carlos? I feel like you have more to say on it. Well, no, I mean, it's like, oh, uh, they're not allowing atheists to be part of the Nazi youth. Oh, how terrible. It reminds me of like when they were whenever yeah. the people are bringing up like, oh, well, they're not allowing gays in the military. I'm like, good for gay people. Yeah, I kind of that was a mixed blessing for me because it was a double edged sword or mixed blessing. Which word? I don't know. Because because on the one hand, I, I mean, I got kicked out of the Navy of the Navy for being gay. Really? Which was traumatizing at the time. But I cannot uh, uh, without a doubt. I look back on that and I cannot feel like my life was not improved by the fact that I got kicked out. It was at the time it, I all I could think was this, you know, you, they they warn you about this. This is a scar on your record. And if you don't get a, depending on how, what kind of discharge you get, it can affect your job applications for years to come. I was terribly worried about being discriminated against because I could not be closeted anywhere you go to apply for a job. They're going to want to see your discharge papers. And it's right there on there. I was like officially federal uh, stamped uh, gay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was not. A, you, I had no choice about being in the closet uh, because I had to hand this paperwork over to any employer, and they would know why I was no longer in the military. I was honorably discharged, so that was a huge relief for me. I was uh, on pins and needles, um, just terrified, um, sweating bullets, waiting for several weeks to hear back as to whether I would get an honorable or a less than honorable of some sort. And I got honorable, and that was a huge relief. But I still had to hand that paperwork over. And every time I did it, I'm like, oh, God, I, you know, this is not something I want to advertise. I don't want to make a deal out of it. But well, no. I have no choice now because they've, they've, they've stamped me as gay on the papers, <laughs> on federal papers. So, um, so that was really weird. This was before Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Like literally a year or two before Don't Ask, Don't Tell is when I got kicked out. And um, so that, that was pretty freaky. That was pretty freaky. But. I look back on it and I go, well, I would have been in for six years instead of two. And it would have been four years of my life where I would have been absolutely miserable and on the border, on the, the, on the edge of committing suicide. It was, that, it, was that, it was that horrible in there. It was just horrible. Um, and then on top of that, I don't know how much of it was just because it sucked and how much it was because I was getting picked on a lot and people knew I was gay. I didn't come out, but people knew. I mean, it's really hard to completely hide something like that. People have gaydar and stuff like that. And after a while, they kept joking about it, joking about it, and it's you know just became a very uncomfortable situation. And and so I'm not sure, but uh, you know I, I'm better off because I got kicked out. And I look now at it, and I'm like, wow, we had this out, and now it's gone. It's the right thing to do as long as there's a government; they shouldn't discriminate. But well, no, I mean, it's, uh, so it Thaddeus, Thaddeus Russell brought, brought up this interesting point from running a history of the United States, where he's bringing up you know, civil rights discrimination, right, during the military and everything else. And he basically stated, you know, it's funny because people go, oh, it's terribly racist that they didn't allow black people to fight, for the most part, in World War I um, and in, in a lot of different wars, right? And they weren't allowing homosexuals to do it either. And he was like, so what uh, you're they, saying They made is, exceptions for that in the wars, though. Yeah, it was, they, it was, they, it was the teetering, and they still would segregate. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. they, well, they would segregate <laughs> at least blacks for the most part, right? And they, didn't, they weren't trying to push those people inward. And it was like, oh, okay, so you're telling me that it's bad because they weren't sending black people to go get murdered for no reason whatsoever. No, it's, that, that's exactly the point. It's a, it's a really shitty place to be yeah. for most people. I guess some people like it, but uh, it's, it, it sucks for the most part. And it's an exploitation. It's treating human beings like they're animals and, and workhorses and and fodder and human shields and whatever. Um, it, it, it sucks. But, uh, but yeah, exactly. And, and, and it, it was quite a double standard because uh, the, you, it was really hard to actually benefit from that during wartime when a lot of people didn't want to go in. There were a lot of people saying they were gay <laughs> when a war came around. And that's when they, all of a sudden they said, oh, it doesn't matter now. But they, they just selectively ignored it during that time. So it was really one of those things where they only discriminated at, mostly as voluntary forces that were, just, that were not allowed to join. If I recall gay, correctly, so. though, didn't Jimi Hendrix actually get out by stating he was gay? I he don't was, know. He was drafted and then I don't he recall stated that. he was gay. I don't know that. Okay. I'm not, maybe. Maybe uh, one of our listeners can... 
post a comment to today's show. So, uh, yeah, there you go. You can't, um, Boy Scouts are still discriminating against atheists uh, more than gay people. Like, you can be a gay Christian Boy Scout, but you can't be a straight atheist Boy Scout. Did you see that? uh, I don't know if they had the article in there, but there was this one thing where they're talking about um, who they're basically asking parents uh, which category people they'd allow their daughter to marry. And gay people were above atheists. (laughs) What? (laughs) Wow. Like you'd rather your daughter marry. I guess the thing about a daughter marrying. Maybe, Maybe they thought like a gay man. No, that's what I'm saying. Is that they'd rather have their daughter marry a gay man than an atheist. So, you see, I want to, sh- <laughs> yeah. I mean, if they're in love, it'd be cool. <laughs> My brain is exploding. Well, I guess, I, 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 you know, I was thinking that they might actually like the idea that, uh, they might like the idea that, um, they're not going to have sex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Maybe they're just retarded. I got to show people this pee toy. <laughs> this pee toy is something. I'm going to show it to people. Let me, uh, let me, yeah, pee toy. I, I, all right, let me. I'm gonna. I have to turn off the text. Was this submitted it. by Neil? By there the it way? is. You you insert this thing apparently mm-hmm. into your oh. urethra. Let me turn off this damn text. It says the show's coming up. The show is actually up. There we go. So it's really tiny. Yeah. Uh, well, it's it's it's. Uh, I don't know how tiny it is. There's nothing there for scale. It's, it's on some kind of metal thing. I imagine that's probably a couple of inches long. No. It goes in. I'm showing it for those of you who are watching the video. It, There's a picture of it. And then I guess it makes it like a shower. It, it looks it, like it's like four or five millimeters. Uh, okay. If you say so. I guess they want it. You don't want it to be like too gigantic and to shove it, to shove it into your urethra, right? No. Right? I, I mean. Oh, my God. Isn't that adorable? No. Okay. <laughs> and Car- my- Carlos and I are just are like staring at this like, I, what? What? Uh, I What? I'm gonna die. And microphilia. Right <laughs> what do you guys think of microphilia? Is it like attraction to really, really tiny people? It's I'm so, to... oh, oh, you know what? I I can't show this because not on, on you stream. No. Right, I can't yeah. show that. I'm gonna get in trouble for that. Mm-hmm. Okay, I can't. Never mind. I'm not gonna be able to show those pictures. No, nope. me... oh, it's um, okay. I did. It... Oh, good. I didn't have the so, camera on. I didn't have the camera on at the time. Microphilia like, is something crap. in the show prep that I hadn't actually gone and, and looked at. Um, I'm, I've got a link to the pictures if you want to go see them, but it's uh, yeah, it's all well about like you know, shrunken women. Shrunken women. Oh, I thought it was shrunken like like micro penises. No, because no, this is microphilia other show is about. microphilia is like an obsession with. The, well, it's obviously a, one of those fictional. Oh, you have that, don't you? No. Yes, you do, Mister Shrinky or whatever it was. What are you talking about? You, you used to watch oh, about a, going uh, into a giant vag- vagina. No, no, no. You used to watch a, a, a show oh. that was on TV, and no, it, that's it was, I don't think it that's. Was, you liked it. It really I, turned you on. You know on. what? I thought it see, microphilia doesn't sound gendered, right? But this implies that it's specifically shrunken women. And like the idea is that they're really vulnerable because they're little and you they show these like big man hands, like, you know, molesting them and playing with them and stuff. Not all of them are being raped, but most of it's not <laughs> rapey. But, uh, but a lot of it is rapey. It's like, oh no, you're giant and I'm just a little tiny woman and I'm so helpless. It's, oh, good grief. Um, and then there's quite a few of them that are, this is, this is the funniest thing I've seen all day. It this is, is hilarious. This it's is hilarious. So you got to check out my, oh, <laughs> shrinking before our eyes. And this is Emma Watson shrinking. Yeah. Okay. So this is a big thing for some people. It's so, kind of fascinating. Now, now what Lauren is talking about when I was a kid, it's a TV series. I had, Dr. I used Shrinker. to get turned on by this TV show called Dr. Shrinker. This is before I even understood sexuality at all. I didn't understand it at all. But I, I did realize that this was doing something for me. It was fetishy. I mean, I don't know that I don't know that I necessarily got boners or anything like that. But I definitely I think it was akin to that. It was like I, I you know, I can look think back on the feeling. I'm like, that was a weird fetishy thing. And it passed. You know, I grew out of it. <laughs> I grew out of it. Oh. <laughs> but oh <laughs> You know, this makes me think though. What do you guys think of people, guys who are attracted to midgets? Yeah, that's a thing too. Um, like, is there some kind of like weird? I think tip one of these pictures on? is a midget. I mean, it's kind of weird. There's a. Well, it, you know, everybody has their own preference. Um, well, I know. I would just like to. I don't know. I would I'm, be curious to hear what what their reason for that is. Like, I know that some people who are attracted to um, trans people, like like 
uh, men who are attracted. I don't even know how, but like it has to do with genitals a lot of times. Like it's a very specific, easily easy to articulate thing. Okay. Or okay. they like. Well, anyhow, but with mid- midgets, I don't know what it is. I, I I can't articulate it because I haven't met anyone. Who yeah, said, I mean, there's said a, that. there's a certain body type that I like from women, yeah, yeah. and it's generally smaller, but not like you know, four foot two. Mm. That's a little far. <laughs> It just reminds me of like a kid. It's kind of creepy. Yeah, I guess until it starts to feel a little pedo if you go too crazy. But then again, then what are we going to say? Like midgets shouldn't have love? Because that would be rude. No. Oh, okay. oh, yeah. I forgot we were talking about midgets. No one, no one would say that. Midgets yeah. don't look like kids, though. They're just small. I mean, yeah, I don't. they don't look like kids. <laughs> Is that um? Well, they, there's dwarfs. <laughs> yeah, I don't think midgets, I want right? to. I don't think I want to imply that if you're yeah. in the midgets that you're kind of pedo. Or, I really I don't, don't want to do that. I, I don't just send your hate mail to Dale at flamingfreedom.com. No, you can send it to me. I was I started it. <laughs> so we already talked about New Hampshire as one of the least religious states. So there's a link to that. I should link to also. To, I'm, I sh- I will probably link to the Free State Project thread about the same thing as well. And I would love to for some of you folks to chime in on that. Um, but, but, yeah, so, micro, oh, oh, you were talking about, like, being into, I mean, would you say that, that you're generally, Carlos, I'm sorry, I was looking at Lauren, it's hard not to, because my mic doesn't turn, well, it does, but, it's noisy, so, would you say that you're, so you're generally into women a little smaller than you? Well, I'm six foot two and two hundred pounds. Yeah, well, so it's kind of easy to be smaller than me. Right, right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, for the most part, especially like I'm kind of into you know petite women who are not six feet tall. I mean, six feet is a little intimidating. Some mm-hmm. people really like tall women. Yeah, some people really I, like. I, they I re- like that tall Swedish model look. I really like tall women. Um, not to say that I don't like short women too. But okay. Yeah. Cool. It's a thing. Um, cool beans. There's there is a reason for that though. I mean, I I think that like petiteness is, or at least we we think of it as a sign of femininity. Yeah. yeah. Um, and youthfulness. Absolutely. Like, uh, there's a there's a word, and you know what the word is. Youthfulness. Yeah. Um, 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 uh, when a, when an adult of a species was looks sh- like mm-hmm. uh, the children of a species, and it's more common for women but, to look. Yes. Uh, I, I wasn't gonna necessarily. I wasn't sure if I was gonna the go word, there. But, but I, I think that that might I, be related to yeah. you, the way you feel. It, well, I wish I, I could remember God, the word. God, if you go yeah. towards like because I like thin women, therefore I like kids or something. No. Then <laughs> no, yeah, that is yeah. that is a little. I, did, I yeah. said no, on no, the no, show. I, once, I, I certainly it, hope that that assumption is not going to come up because that can make the same argument that girls who like guys who shave like five year olds because <laughs> then they're making themselves look like young people. Yeah. Um. Well, I think youth is appealing to everyone, Tra- right? Traditionally, some, though, some, some level of youth, youth, youth is appealing yeah, because I, I it represents universal. health. You know, mm-hmm. a woman after a certain age can no longer bear children. Uh, yeah. So uh, certainly, there's there's reasons for why people are attracted to youthfulness. Um, uh, I did actually do a show where I mostly in jest implied that you know straight guys are a little bit pedo. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, jokingly, jokingly, I think that you could but write the, a very the, serious but, but argument without a doubt, for that. Women, women do. C- c- what do the fuck share would more... the argument be that most oh, straight oh, guys are pedo? Oh, sorry, <laughs> I, 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 I forgot. I didn't actually think you were going to take that seriously. Sorry, Carlos. No, no, no. Um, I, it's I. That's not what I'm suggesting at all. Uh, what is that word? I've interviewed pedophiles, and they're a specific type of people. And yeah. they're not like normal straight guys no, whatsoever. No, 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 no. It, it yeah. was it was mostly in jest. I wasn't. Okay. It, I wasn't suggesting that. Yeah. No, most straight guys are not pedos. No. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but it, but the, but a lot of the characteristics that we think of as feminine are um, also you related to youth, or you know, and and. You know, smooth skin and yes. being shorter versus taller. I'll and, have to try to figure uh, out how to pretend to be. I'll play the devil's advocate next week yeah, on the yeah. show. The devil's advocate uh, for what? For this concept. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, anyway, I'm I just trying thought it was to be funny. controversial. I, I, I did it to get a rise out of people mostly, and it works obviously. Well, obviously, it works. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not getting all tasty in the corner here. The thing is, 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 is a reason why I'm interested in this because okay, so when I was living in Asheville, North Carolina, there was a, a prevalence for women who didn't shave whatsoever. And if you weren't into that, people would basically go, that's because you're into little girls. So they'd immediately yeah. go with, therefore, you like to it's, fuck kids. Yeah. Because you don't prefer women with bushes that are thicker than your head of hair. 
<laughs> all right. right. And to right. me, all I have to say to that is fuck you. Like that. By is the a, way, I'm not a fan of body hair. I'm not a pedo. I'm not yeah. a fan of. I'm a gay man. I'm not a fan of body hair. Like, but I'm definitely into me. men. I'm yeah. definitely into men. I'm saying some men are not as hairy as other men. Uh, do I prefer a less hairy man to a hairy man? Yes, but I still prefer men. You know, and men uh, clearly show exhibit many traits that uh, separate them clearly and distinctly from children. Yeah. So uh, you know. So yeah, you can't ju- do, say ridiculous things like that, but. Yeah, and right. it was, it no, was a like lot of the, things the things you're talking about are also the things that are associated with femininity. So if you're a straight guy, it makes sense that you're attracted to people who have less body hair, for instance, because that's a feminine trait. Yeah. Yeah. So. And I, I guess that's an area where I'm, I, you know, you could say I'm a little less gay because I like guys who are less hairy. Maybe I'm a little less gay. That's weird. I don't care. It's not a, it's not a contest, you know. I don't. I think you like penises, and that makes you pretty gay. I don't I don't think that, that, like that, penises that, that, either. The, the genitals don't define yeah. the sexuality. I don't. Yeah, think. I, I'm oh, one of those okay. people where yeah. it's not about gen. It's never been about genitals for no. me. See, I'm mm. used to hanging out with straight people. I can just say that, and I can get away with it. But I'm realizing the fact yeah. that I don't know. No, it's I'm it's, it's, it's speaking it's, out of line it's, here. I'm not you're, upset. You're, I'm not angry or upset with you. I understand you're you're jumping to that conclusion. However, that is sort of a pet peeve of mine in general. That the the people uh people say, oh, he's gay. It means he likes to suck dick. I'm like, no, I actually don't particularly like to suck dick. Um, I I will. I do. I mean, I'm not an asshole. If I'm with someone who really wants me to, but I mean, it's, it's just, it's not like, you know, if I'm with someone who doesn't care for it, then we won't, we won't do that and I'll be fine. And there yeah. are people that don't particularly care for it. They're like, I don't really want someone to suck my dick. Okay. Okay. I won't. <laughs> We're good. Let's move on. So, yeah. All righty. Nothing I can say to that. Yeah, we're, we're but done. Lauren, we're, Lauren, let's let you wrap up because you had that. you added something here uh, about the good. Re- are there any good oh, reasons yeah. for you to so, change your name and yeah, gender this, marker on government this documents? This comes up a lot. I don't know if it's worth uh, discussing. We are close to the end of the show, um, but in the in the theme of of gender fucking, um, like why not? Why not just be a rebel and just say, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna. Because I'm not gonna it ask might permission to suck say who I am. A little, how will it suck? How how will it suck? Um, first thing that comes to mind is traveling TSA. What if I can get? What if I can go around that? What if I can just fly on a private plane? Can you? Mm-hmm. You get a lot of money. Oh well, if you oh. can, then I don't want to talk about it. So you, if you have the luxury of being able to avoid the TSA completely, yep. Now that's the first thing that comes to mind. Um, well, first of all, the TSA, I mean... Do you think why, you might get it, in trouble for walking it, into the quote-unquote wrong bathroom at some point? N- no, why would it matter? And who would care? I mean... Probably not, unless right? some kind of incident happened, yeah, so, and they're like, wait so, a minute, you were in the, the women's the, restroom, the, and you're not a woman? Officially, and legally, and on paper? Right. I mean, how... But that's the whole point is is it makes them think like, oh, yeah, this is absurd. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, I don't I'm not harmed by this. Does it? I don't know if it always does. No, no. I'm not sure it always does. I'm just thinking that it might be it might be um, it might kind of fall under knee jerk activism. Um, Yeah, that's no, it's true. It's true. Um, The TSA, though, I can speak to that. Um, Having read the entire TSA. like standard operating procedure manual from 2008 released by WikiLeaks. Um, I know that they search people's gender based on um, their gender presentation and not the actual gender marker. Um, okay. that, that is oh, something okay. that they do. And that good luck with Pat, right? From Saturday Night Live. Yeah, no, it, it, not it must anyone be, has it must really be challenging. clear gender. There's people. Um, yeah. I, well, at that point, I think they would re- refer to the document. Um, okay. But I think I could. Right. Maybe I mean you, you're already pa- you already you already passed pretty well, so mm-hmm. I think uh, yeah. We'll see. Um, Depend- I mean, depending on how you're presenting, yeah. perhaps. So anyway, so 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 far, I can't think of any good reasons. Okay. Well, if you can't think of any, then I wouldn't I do mean, it. If you can't think of good reasons to do it, then I'm with you. I wouldn't do it. Okay. I mean, what? Why? Why should you? It, it's it's it, it doesn't sound particularly risky. Like it does, and it doesn't sound no. like it's going to create a huge pain in your ass. Um. It might, though. I mean, I would say just think through it and, and think about possible reasons. Like, when is this going to come back and bite me in the ass later? And if you can't think of any reasons, then maybe you're right. What's the point of doing it? Well, no. And 
I mean, when it comes to the TSA thing, you can just state categorically like, no, uh, this state's mail on here, but I live this other way and it's none of your fucking business. Like, I, I just don't yeah. understand yeah, what the fuck the issue is going to be. I do that all that. the time. Yeah. I, so I've had what's going to come down, many down to is here's the thing about trans trans people. Let's say someone, let's say, uh, let, I don't know, are you okay with me using you as an example? If you uh, say my other name, I'll be upset. No, no. But let's say, for instance, that you are in a, situ in a situation where, I, like, I don't know how much you want to talk about your specific plans and things and transition, but let's say you're in a particular situation where you have not transitioned in some ways that are not apparent to most people all, most of the time. I don't, right? Bottom I, surgery. I, oh, I see. Okay. Bottom surgery. Do, do most people, do I need to define what bottom surgery is? Like genital reassignment. Mm -hmm. Let's say, uh, let's say you're, you're. Are you talking about me specifically? Uh, just for, as a, for example, at the TSA. Okay. Uh, are, are, it, you can have bottom surgery and still have it say male on your stuff. Right. But here's the problem. I, I, I specifically want to talk about someone who's presenting a certain way mm -hmm. and either because they are, they've chosen not to, or they just haven't gotten around to it yet. They have not had bottom surgery, right? Genital so reassignment. So a male to female person. Uh, as an example, we'll say a male to female okay. person mm -hmm. for this particular case. Well, now you're going, you're showing up at the TSA. Forget your gender markers. Let's just, based on your presentation and everything, they have to decide whether a man or a woman is going to fondle you all over. And they reach up in that area. You, th the person who's fondling you is going to if, touch if you, you all if over. If you present as a woman and you say, yeah. I am a woman. Then they, a woman is going woman to, to, right. Yeah. And so now, the, the, now the woman is fondling. I would prefer that area as well. Is that what you would prefer? I mean, I, yeah, I prefer. But, but I don't know. If that's the case for every but there trans might, person. But there might be. A, I'm not speaking yeah. as a trans person. I'm just speaking yeah. as a person. Yeah. I think. I mean, you, Carlos. I mean, you might have a preference. Would you prefer a woman feeling your junk or a man? I prefer an 80 year old black man touching my junk. Okay. <laughs> See, there's a preference there, and I think. That's where is the that, is that that's a serious the answer? Or? Well, that's where the last TSA agent checked up my balls. Was. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, and, and I was, it was totally fine. It was good. It, well, it, I just it made fun well. of them the entire I don't, time. Oh, I don't okay. particularly feel safer with a man doing it than a woman, honestly. I think it's no. silly. I think it's fucking I mean, creepy anyway. It's always creepy when someone's doing that that you don't know, uh, and it sucks and it's ridiculous, and they need to stop because it's such an, a, a horrible invasion over stupid shit. And uh, either and way, I'm completely for, for uncomfortable. For a faucet of security, that's all it's for. And you know, and but I just I'm thinking in particular for trans people, like they, you know, who are you comfortable with fondling you? And no, I don't think nobody. most people aren't. Yeah, the nobody. answer is you're not you're right. comfortable. You're no, right. no human being is comfortable. You're there, right. are, there are old ladies who say, "Oh, it's for my safety. It's because they're going to oh, get the terrorists. It's for my but false no, sense of security, is what it is. Because they, they never yeah. caught a terrorist." Maybe they like they get their vagina touched for once. Though. There've been certainly been cases There's of them. There've been cases of them being prosecuted for uh, un, uh, bad behavior <laughs> and stealing and fondling inappropriately and looking at pictures mm -hmm. of naked kids and things. But they haven't caught any terrorists. So the price we're paying for the false sense of security is of security is ridiculous. Yeah, that's oh. what I, that's the point I was going to get to. But is like I think I think trans people really make the point better than anything else. Yeah, and that they, this is not appropriate can, for anybody. It doesn't matter exactly, who's doing exactly, it. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And they can gender fuck the hell out of the TSA person. I mm. can go into a TSA place dressed as male, and then like when the guy comes up to to feel me up, touches. I can start to take off my shirt, and then he sees, oh, wait, yeah, you're not male. Oh shit, right. And and I can be, cause a hell be, of a scene, and I have. That's a good and it's gender awesome. fuck. Awesome, and I we approve, should film it sometime. I totally approve that gender fuck. I think you yeah. should totally do that to some TSA agents. <laughs> um. Anyway. All right. Cool, folks. So I don't All need right. to change my name or, little, my, or my stuff. Yeah. We've gone we've gone a little Perfect. over. So uh, I say I say keep thinking for reasons so that you don't get screwed over later. It doesn't doesn't come and bite you in the ass. But I see it, no reason. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. This has been Flaming Freedom, May 13th. Make sure you check us out on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash Flaming Freedom. Check us out on Google Plus and Diaspora. And you go to flamingfreedom.com and make comments on our sh show page and things like that. Share it with your friends. Post us on forums. We f spread via word of mouth better than anything else, and we need your help in that area. Make sure you click like and share uh, as soon as you get a chance to. 
If you are listening to the downloaded podcast next week, uh, listen to us live. We might be Tuesday at 10 p.m. or we might decide that we're going to happen <laughs> on a weekend. Uh, we're going we're gonna to figure that out. I think we may end up being Sunday morning, right? Yeah. Sunday Ooh, morning. That would be fun. Yep. You'd watch cartoons and then Flaming Freedom. 10.30, something like that. I yep. sure. Mind if I plug my show real quick? Yeah. Yeah. Please hey, do by so. the way, thank you very much for coming. Yeah. Thank you, Carlos. Us. Absolutely. So been, you can check fun. out all my thing, all my stuff at truthovercomfort.net. I do a regular live show with Lauren Rumpler called The True Objective on Mondays. You can find all that good stuff, though, through um, truthovercomfort.net and Facebook. Awesome. And I'm going to link to the website of your preference, probably truthovercomfort.net. Okay. From our show page, again, so if you've forgotten any of those URLs, you can find them by clicking on Carlos's name on our show page for today, the May 13th episode. Uh, this has been Flaming Freedom. Thanks for joining us.